So uh, the project, uh, so today's talk is about uh, using this like, uh, as a kind of like additives uh, to produce some construction materials. Uh, the percentage we are gonna show you how much we are using is not like the other people, like, but this is a, a bit another application of this like cement. So uh, with the urban development happening, uh, the production of the OPC increased uh, during the like uh, last uh, like during the last decades, and if we want as engineers, if we want to know some numbers, uh, since two, uh, like 2010 to 2022, you see the increase of production of Portland cement in the United States, and in 2022 we are talking about 90, uh, about 95 million tons of uh, Portland cement and Mansur cements produced. But is there an issue with that? Uh, we are all talking about sustainability the, uh, like during the last years. And we know uh, just, uh, we know want, if you want to produce one tons of OPC, you need about 1.5 tons of raw materials. Uh, that releases about, one, the production process releases about one ton of CO2 to the atmosphere, which is about 8% of the all CO2 releases to the atmosphere annually. Uh, on the other hand, mining industry is producing large amount of mine waste uh, annually, and if we want to get some, uh, have some numbers about it, the numbers are a little bit old, but uh, still, it's a huge number. So in the United States, every year, we are having about 1.6 billion metric tons of mineral processing waste, and also uh, we have uh, about two five million tons of slags producing. Uh, and what, uh, what we are doing with those, uh, we are like landfilling them, uh, like we are re repurposing the slag, of course, but uh, the mine tailings generally goes to the tailing dams. And uh, the tailing dams, if the failure happens, uh, is like a kind of like severe uh, consequences it has. Uh, some of these failures, tailing dams when failure, you see annually we have at least one failure I mean, the, the engineers trying to do their best design, but uh, it's in nature, happens. So you see, annually we have a failure happening, and uh, it starts from minimum five million metric cub uh, cubic metric of material flowing uh, to the surrounding community, and sometimes it goes to over 45 million. So the environmental problems with putting the mine tailings to the landfills is like uh, slumps, landslides that's happening, dust. Somewhere like in Arizona, we have these uh, tailings drying, and then the, with the wind coming, all these heavy metals come, uh, going to the dust, and then carcinogenic problems happening in the community around it. Uh, and one of the basic things that happens also with the tailings, management of tailings, is the leaching, uh, that the heavy metals leach to the ground uh, water and, and pollutes the groundwater, which is not good for the environment. But is there something that we can do? Um, the the most economy way is to promote the use of tailings as a construction material. So instead of sending these tailings, uh, like tailings to the tailing dams, uh, try to use them in industry, uh, some beneficial products. But there, is there any method that we can meet uh, the environmental and uh, ignore, uh, like try to prevent the CO2 emission? Uh, yes, we use the geopolymerization technology, but what is geopolymerization? Geopolymerization is basically alkali activation of the material rich in silica and alumina. The tailings are high in silica and alumina. Uh, some tailings are very active because they, just, they got from the plant very fresh, but some of them that we are gonna talk about it in this study, uh, they are coming from closed mines. Uh, they are already like maybe 20, more than 50 years in the tailing dams. A lot of weatherings happen there. But anyway, so the alkali activation of the tailings uh, results in a geopolymer paste. And it's a treating a, like polymer uh, provides a very good bonding. Is there, uh, what are the advantages of using this technology? The raw materials are, we have a lot, a lot of raw materials, just a few slides ago, we talked about the numbers, how much mine tailings we are producing, and also a slag we have available. Uh, the good thing with geopolymerization is the rapid development of mechanical strength, immobilization of the toxic materials, like we can stabilize the heavy metals inside the uh, polymer network, and also 
we have a significant reduction of the greenhouse gases uh, compared to the conventional cementitious material. The goal of our project was, uh, one goal of the, our, our project was to build a basic element of construction, brick. But why brick? Bricks are widely used in construction, of course, and to pr produce bricks you need uh, natural resources like clay, uh, and you need a, a high energy intensive uh, process like kiln firing. Um, but is it a really market size that we need to pay attention to it? Uh, of I think yes. Uh, since to, uh, the numbers you see here is from 2014 to 2022, uh, a small reduction in the production of uh, bricks in the U.S. Uh, you can see it's happening from 2019 to 2020. Maybe we can relate it to COVID. I don't, I'm not sure about it. But in 2023, we are talking about 5.8 billion dollars of revenue. For the, mark, uh, for the brick industry. So if we want to produce bricks with these tailings, what are the requirements? Uh, the ASCM is, uh, require, uh, is require, like uh, asking for 20, like 0 0.7 megapascal uh, of the compressive strength and the maximum water absorption of 16%. The study we did, uh, we did the study in three scales, so micro scale and micro. So we did different testings uh, like a uh, compression test, water absorption test. Uh, we try to check their dur durability by using wet and dry cycle tests, freeze start tests, and also we try to check the environmental part of the production. So th we did the leaching test, and also we check the microstructure to analyze. What are the process we uh, followed? We used the mine tailings and used the slag uh, in different combinations. We mixed it with the, our alkaline actuators in different ratios. We compacted to uh, produce bricks, cured it in the oven, and then we final, finally had the bricks, and then we test them produce. So initially, we didn't, uh, we didn't use the slag, so we just used the mine tailings. And with the activation of the mine tailings, uh, using different uh, ratios of the chemical that we are using with the 10 and 15 mole sodium hydroxide, and with sodium silicate to sodium hydroxide ratio of up to three, we saw a very significant increase by increasing the ratio of the chemicals. And even in seven days, we were reaching somewhere around 22 megapascal. Uh, that's something good, but the issue is about durability. Uh, I will show you this figure, and then we will come back to the picture. So the issue was, when we used only the mine tailings, uh, we had the very high UCS, but the UCS was not really from the geopolymer that is happening inside the material. So it, as soon as we exposed the uh, part of the bricks to the water, it was decomposing and all the bindings were gone. And in microstructure studies show that it's, uh, it's not that geopolymerization happening, it's just the uh, uh, silica gels that are drying and then holding the materials together. And as soon as you expose the material, <coughs> Uh, it, the binding wash away and then you lose the good binding. So that 20 megapascal is kind of like fake. Uh, so we decided to use a slag uh, uh, with different percentages, but only with 10%, you see the integrity of the broken, even the broken sample, the integrity is there. But why this happening is because, uh, as I mentioned in my early part of my talk, the mine tailings we use is coming from a mine tailing dam that is closed about 20 years ago uh, in Arizona. And those tailings are uh, exposed to a lot of weatherings, and the silica and the alumina they have are mostly washed away. So these results are comparing the mine tailings of our study and the mine tailings coming from an active mine. And you see when we are trying to see how much silica and alumina we can dissolve from the mine tailings, in our tailings is about only 16%, while in the active mine tailings is about 61%. So you see the huge difference between the unreactive mine tailings and reactive mine tailings. So we t uh, the, the goal was to use these unreactive tailings, and then we used slag, slag as an additive uh, to try to uh, produce something beneficial, which uh, in this study was great. So we tested different uh, percentage of slag, uh, we tested also like higher percentages. Of course, with increasing the slag, we see improvement in the mechanical properties, the strength, uh, 
uh, and also uh, like the unit weight is also increasing because of the weight of the stack. Um, of course, it's heavier than my tailings. But because the goal was, uh, in our project, the goal was to optimize the use of the tailings, copper tailings, we tried to use only 10% of the slag for the, our study. We tried to check the effect of the curing temperature, how much it's going to affect our geopolymerization. And then we noticed that with 75 to 90 degrees Celsius curing in the oven, we have a optimum UCS. Then the important part was uh, like about the forming pressure. So uh, when we are producing the brick, we are compressing the material. So how much uh, force we need to use, the, uh, use to uh, press the material. We checked from one megapascal to 30 megapascal at different water contents. And we saw that by compressing uh, more uh, with, uh, uh, like, uh, with a higher forming pressure, the UCS is increasing uh, probably because uh, the permeability is decreasing, the material are more compact, denser. Uh, but if you have more water in the system, as you press it more, then the liquid is going to squeeze out and the UCS is going to decrease. As you see, the green line, which is for the higher water content, have a lower even UCS. So the, uh, we put all these samples that we have, so with different water contents at different forming pressures. We try to put them in the water to check their water absorption. And we noticed that uh, all the samples at different forming pressure, different water content, has a maximum water absorption of 13%, which is good because the ASM is asking for 16% maximum. Then, when we have these samples taken out of the water after this test, uh, when they were in wet, and dry, uh, wet condition, uh, we tested for their UCS. Uh, and uh, you, uh, the results, uh, of course, decrease, but we wanted to check for the optimum point uh, where we can use as a final forming pressure. We also dried the samples uh, in the room temperature and we check, uh, for 24 hours and we checked the UCS again. So we noticed that with 20 megapascal forming pressure, we have an optimum point. Uh, and of, uh, the uh, water absorption is uh, less than 16%, so this is our final uh, optimized like forming pressure for production of the bricks. Now, uh, ACM is asking for 20 megapascal in 28 days. So the results I was showing was for seven days. So we try to check and see how the, uh, UCS, how the UCS is evolving during the time. And we notice that for, uh, there is a sharp increase from seven days to 28 days. Uh, and then in 28 days, we have about 24 megapascal, which is uh, higher than the ESCM requirement. Now it's the time for the durability. Uh, we try to expose the bricks uh, to wet and dry, uh, to a freeze and thaw cycle. Uh, so freeze, uh, freeze and then thaw in the water tank. Uh, we did the test for 50 cycles. Uh, here you see it's about a week. So each week it consists of five cycles. So after 50 cycles, the, the weight loss we, uh, we see in the material is about 1.5%, like 1.1%. And uh, after 50 cycle, this, uh, the picture you see is uh, initially, and then after 50 cycle, we saw some minor cracks on the surface, but the cracks were not uh, like uh, dis disturbing the sample. So it was passing the freeze and thaw requirements of the ASC. We also expose the samples to wet and dry cycles. So 14 days, uh, 20, like 28 days, one day in the uh, water and one day outside. Uh, and we notice that there, there is a weight loss by increasing the wet and dry cycles. And the total weight loss is around something around 7%. seven, uh, seven and the UCS at the wet condition is decreasing from, if you have the sample dry condition, like pr fresh produced sample, which is about 24 megapascal, then the UCS will decrease after 14 megapascal. It's about like something around seven to eight megapascal. But remember, this is in the wet condition. So as soon as we take the samples out, uh, they are saturated and we test the material. So uh, this is the lowest UCS we can get from the samples, but it's still the samples has the integrity and that's good about this. Material. So we check the microstructure 
And we noticed that uh, the samples, uh, after 14 wet and dry cycles, the permeability is increases, the void ratio is increases. And the reason is mainly, if you, we saw from the EDA, EDAX mappings, that the sodium is the element that is washing away uh, from the parts that the geopolymerization is not stable, mainly from the surface. Uh, because as you, as you break the samples, you see the core of the bricks are very uh, stable. So the sodium, unreactive sodium is washing away, and that's the main reason we see an increase in the void ratio. And our uh, XRD uh, like analysis uh, from zero and 14 day wet and dry cycle show a reduction of the uh, quartz peaks and then increase in the light and that shows the for transformation of the quartz to light during this uh, wet and dry cycles. We also test the samples for the leaching. So we try to expose the samples uh, four months to two uh, water conditions, uh, like one with uh, natural, uh, like uh, pH 7, and then one with pH uh, 3, uh, to uh, understand uh, how the material behaves in acidic environment. And uh, uh, the results uh, were interesting because first, uh, when we expose the mine tailings to slag, uh, high content of heavy metals are dissolved into the water and also in the acidic uh, solution and in the acidic solution was much higher than compared to the normal water. But when we put the bricks inside the, uh, the same solutions, uh, we saw that they are all uh, decreased significantly and they are in the EPA limits and also the German and Greek. So it's also passing the environmental uh, tests. The conclusion of the study was, is that uh, Using the mine tailings and with the help of the slag, we can produce a construction material that uh, they are more sustainable and at least we can prevent from the uh, catastrophic events happening for the tailing dams. And this is the picture of the bricks that we produced uh, in this study. Thanks to our sponsor, BHP Company, for uh, like, uh, sponsoring this project. And thank you for listening to me. Thank you.